a lot of times you have very successful people and you see the children they're not able to take anything from their parents how does it even get to a space where people are struggling with people in the human civilization you see something very exciting interesting the second generation the third generation and sometimes the grandchild is actually helping the grandparents become more relevant and it's not the children doing it it's the grandchildren doing it it's a question of more evolution artists in the world i feel like if you're a human being become an <laughs> evolution artist Some of you may be here for the first time and as you know Arun and I are evolution scientists our agenda is to take the science of personal evolution of individuals to a whole new level for everyone because every individual every person is trying to evolve someone as a parent people try to evolve their children as a spouse you want your partner to get to the next level and as mentors as leaders everyone is evolving a set of people at any given point in time but until now it's done very in- instinctively it's done based on conventional methods of training and education and there hasn't been a very scientific approach to make it easy to make it fast to make it time compressed so that it happens in a short time instead of a longer time and more importantly to make it ecological that things that you help a person improve in one aspect of their life doesn't mess up the other aspects this is the anh podcast to help you and billions of people around the world get the secrets and the science behind artists who are really good with personal evolution so that you too can be a great influence to the people in your life and the people you want to lead so harney what makes you want to do this podcast why are you doing it there's a reason why human beings are put together in this world we're not each put in silos mm-hmm. there's a reason where when a child is born it's born into a family and right at the beginning you're not alone you already have a set of people around you and the dynamics of society and the design i think by nature is such that we are with people which means we cannot not influence people if only people learned you know because i I've, i've seen through the experience of everything that we've done that people with the best of intentions for the other person can still have a devastating impact on another person and we see that happen right in families so much right like where the child feels like the parent doesn't understand them the parent feels like the child is just being a total rebel they have the best of intentions for each other but how does it even get to a space where when they are born there's so much love there's so much nurturing there's so much care from there how does it get to a space where people are struggling with people and i feel like somewhere if people are better equipped with how do you evolve one another yeah and also it's very interesting because a lot of times you have very successful people and you see the children they're not able to take anything from their parents and in fact although nepotism is a big thing uh, in many industries but the reality is very few successors very few children very few in the next generation are able to build on top of what they parents are building and it clearly shows that there is that transfer of intelligence transfer of knowledge by making it relevant to the next generation completely lacking and a lot of times you find that you know there are mentors there are leaders and they 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 try and help a lot of people and there's one or two people who outshine in that and the rest of them are still in the same trajectory they came in at the beginning so there's something about those individuals who outshine and not necessarily so much about that mentoring or that leadership that actually gets them to the next level in fact and that's why a lot of the universities the ivy leagues the harvard the mits in the world they already take people who are the next league who are like the one person in the world because they know that if they were to take anybody else it's going to be difficult to get them to the next level so when it comes to evolving people we are like kind of in the dark ages there is no scientific 
measurable, predictable way to do this. The way it works is like, you know, you just throw everything out and if something sticks, you're like, oh, okay, this works. But there's no accountability, there's no safety net, there's no predictability to how people can be evolved. And as you said, it's one thing that separates humans from the rest of the species. Because for most species, what they help the next generation or how they help each other is kind of hard-coded. You know, like this is the way a pride behaves. This is the way a group of giraffe behaves. But with humans, we shape the context. We shape the world we live in. There is this aspect where you're always stepping into an unknown because we're changing the world we live in. And you have to get adept and you have to help people in your ecosystem get adept and you have to help the next generation get adept. And there's another peculiar thing that you see in the human species that doesn't happen in the animal kingdom. For example, the lions that are like the roaring, like the giant, the majestic so-called kings of the jungle they get slaughtered when they're old. They're eaten by wild bees. They're like tortured and painfully killed. And the young ones are not there to protect them. But in the human civilization, you see something very exciting, interesting, that you have the second generation, the third generation, and sometimes the grandchild is actually helping the grandparents become more relevant. And it's not the children doing it, it's the grandchildren doing it. So you see like like this complete loop, like there's a closed loop when it comes to humans. So not only are parents trying to evolve their children, but at some time, the children start evolving their parents. They make them more relevant to the world. The grandchildren make the grandparents more relevant to the world. So nobody escapes the responsibility to evolve someone. And the most delightful thing for husband and wife is to actually, you know, help each other become a, a better human being. Humans also have this thing that is different from animals is that we have a moral compass. And that moral compass is a higher standard than what most animals would hold because you're not programmed and you're not acting based just on the programmed instincts. You're also discerning for yourself, mm -hmm. okay? A thousand years ago, a hundred years ago, our generations lived like this. But is that the way we want to live? Can we make a better place? Can we make better impact on the world? So, and all of this requires evolution. Now, why does a parent think about a child even before they're born, on which school they have to be, where should they go for the next 10 years? It's not the education. It's because they want to know how the child will become 10 years later. So everybody is deeply interested in evolution of their children. They just don't know a scientific, predictable way that puts them in charge. So they try random things. And I think one of our core desires has been, can we take the science of personal evolution and make it available to billions of people on the planet? And you feel, and you particularly feel, that the world would be a better place if everyone had access to tools of personal evolution that are faster, quicker, time compressed, safer, and more ecological. And continuously evolving and relevant. And continuously. This is, this mm -hmm. is different from like, the, say the science of gravity yeah. that we once found and mm -hmm. it still exists and it's continuing to exist. It's like, it's just done. It's like you found it and it's there. But with personal evolution science, given the fact that for human species, yeah. the rate and speed of evolution is unprecedented. Like every 10 years, you're walking into a new era. And, you know, we're most often amused by it. It's like people who are barely 30 years old look back at the 20s and when they were like maybe teenagers and some of the things that they were exposed to or even technology and everything when they talk about it today to like a very young child they can't connect to most of it like like for example we weren't born with ipads like or you know or an iphone or even a mobile phone like most people today are the rate and speed at which evolution is happening around us and humans are creating this context but unfortunately, there hasn't been a definitive, reliable, fast-tracked, continuously evolving science when it comes to personal evolution. And I think that is the gap that we have filled. And that's why we're personal evolution scientists versus personal evolution um, theorists. Are, uh, yeah, you know, science is based on validated results and not philosophy. 
I want to get to that in a moment, Harini. But before that, I want to. Uh, I'm curious to you know why do you think that if if there are more evolution artists in the world, that the world will be a better place? Everybody should become an evolution artist, I, and I don't even think. It's a question of more evolution artists in the world. I feel like if you're a human being, become an evolution <laughs> artist. Because when you are an evolution artist, you already hold a responsibility towards people around you. Yeah, you know, when you speak the 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 metaphor that I'm getting, the analogy is, you know, imagine if everybody had a violin in their hand and some were artists <laughs> and some were horrible with it. And you know, violin is not like guitar or any of these simple instruments. You can't just touch a string it's not going to sound pretty yeah. especially if you you must have been yeah, around people who've learned like the violin and and it's like horrible to hear till they get it right yeah. so imagine if everyone had a violin thank god we are not born with a violin in our hand but imagine a world if everybody had a violin and 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 half the world played it horribly wrong it would just be so nightmarish to like you know you don't know if you walk into a street you might just hear someone playing like a horrible violin um but that's what is happening with evolution everybody is born with evolution need with personal evolution need for themselves and for someone else and some people become artists but what about the others they're not just harming themselves they're not just slowing down themselves they are becoming an impediment or the goodness in the world can be much more if everybody is born as an evolution artist and you feel like even if they are not there's a science to make everyone an evolution artist so you're not just talking about a science like a framework like you know chemistry like you know you mix two compounds and predictable results but you're talking about a science to improve everyone's evolution artistry and you feel like that has to go to everyone because they are born with that need the ability of everybody to yeah. evolve people around them as yeah. well as themselves yeah. recognize so evolve itself means you're doing something and it's having an impact it's going to have a consequence and it's not just immediate but it's through time yeah that's evolution evolution is not a one time thing or a one day thing yeah. nobody measures evolution by what happens in one day yeah. but evolution as a concept presupposes the very important integral aspect of time mm -hmm. and i think humans are so easily caught in the the challenge of i think everybody tries their best to do the best that they can Yeah. At any given point in time. I'm just imagining an orchestra. Everybody trying to play really well, <laughs> but they have a violin in their hand. Some people are artists and they sound beautiful. Yeah. While some others, uh, you know, are doing their best, but it's not sounding good. But yeah. if you know, my mother often um, wonders. You know, like you know, she's heard this orchestra. She's seen sometimes. and she's wondering why are there so many violins violinists and they're all playing the same thing can they not like just have one violin <laughs> you know and uh, yeah i, I wondered that too <laughs> <laughs> in the earlier days when i used to um record like uh, like just in the beginning of my uh, days of my playback singing career very innocently i went and asked a music director you know so there's something called dt uh, in 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 recording is where you singing a particular track and then they play the track back and you're singing the same tr same track again like it has to sync like as if it's the exact same thing and the interesting is thing especially with the human voice is that no two sounds can exactly sound the same and now if you have to take that over to instruments uh, whether it's a guitar even if it's an electric guitar it's the artist who's playing the exact same thing twice it sounds almost similar but it's not the same so uh, i used to wonder and i didn't know that back then i said okay why can't i just sing it once and then you copy paste the track over <laughs> and over again and you know would it not give you the dt effect but uh, and i mean he gave me some scientific explanation to it and i don't remember i can't i can't quite recollect he gave me a very technical explanation to it but now when i look back um and you know through all the years of recording that i've done even though i'm singing the exact same thing when i'm singing the exact same thing the second time it's still not the same the quality of voice and everything is different so i'm one person and i'm doing two different tracks which exactly sound the same and they're not they're not the same they're still that tiny difference which is what 
brings that uh, the beauty of the dt as they say or a dt or a 3t now if it's like that with one person and two different tracks which sound you know different imagine at the same time the whole world picked up their uh, their you know the violin and they were all in perfect harmony they were synced nothing was out of tune and um, you know they were doing a beautiful four part harmony i think i think something would something could just stop in the world <laughs> with just the magnificence of the sound that can get created if everybody were to come together now maybe that's not possible where like you know you can't have like a billion people playing the perfect orchestra together but but often you just have one evolution artist changing an entire family yeah. and maybe an one family changing an entire society maybe one society changing an entire city and uh, there are cases where just the uprising of a single city led to a country becoming uh, a very powerful nation so yes i mean it is beauty it not just in everyone being evolution artists but even if it starts with certain pockets of people and they can create together harmoniously a very powerful impact because even a few soulful artists yeah. can bring a change like nothing else yeah and everybody has heard of you know in their generation they've always looked up to a band they've looked up to some artist who sing so soulfully and they had the message that is relevant for society at that time and if musicians can do that imagine actually skilled evolution artists what can they do with their presence and impact on the people and uh, society around them while's bringing their unique skills and capabilities that unique flavor that's something that's so special to them because no two human beings are the same yes while keeping that unique aspect of it when they bring in evolution artistry into every aspect of their life into every human interaction i think that would be so incredible because i think most human beings are very inherently good by nature they they have good intentions for other people it's uh, yes there may be some part of the society that's a little maligned or whatever well in But, some in some belief systems they think that human beings were created in the image of god so if there is a way to evolve people that gets the goodness back to them maybe they can really do good and uh, and even if not what about the people who already intend to do good can they evolve can they create impact because sometimes it just takes a little percent of the people to make really big impact in the world you start speaking about it being scientific and validated versus being a philosophy when it comes to personal evolution one of the challenges that we have seen is that a lot of people have theories about this is how you have to do it that is how you have to do it what we bring to this show this entire podcast is validated experiences so because we are evolution artists and also we are evolution artists who focus on time compression which is making things that might happen after 5 to 10 years happen in like a really short time we have the bandwidth and because a business is structured in a particular way we actually have validated evidences of some of the capabilities and strategies and what they can do to a person's exposure and thereby their evolution one of the things that we can give in this podcast and we look for everybody watching this who is interested to become an evolution artist is very validated strategies and contextualized strategies because you know there are things that people say and they're all good but when is it good and when when is it like going to work exactly opposite of what is it intended for and these are things that have to be validated like you you enable a person you develop a capability you put them on a new path and if you can notice that it produces certain results then you're right if it does and you learn from it so that's validation and what hurry and i bring is the validation of millions of installations that we have done for thousands and thousands of participants in our ecosystem and so when you hear something about evolution and the science of personal evolution it's always backed by some practical validated result that has happened not in one person but hundreds of people in in the ecosystem like one of the things that harani and i boldly put out long time ago is about integrated life outcomes which is we said hey you know what 
it is possible for people to evolve to the next league and Im- improve the impact against everything in their career or business, in their family, in their relationships, in their personal genius, in their artistry, in the impact they create in the world. And they don't have to sacrifice one for the other. In fact, it's better if they don't sacrifice one for the other because then it means that you're making it happen in the most natural way possible. And the reason we could say that is not because we felt that's the way the world should work, because we experienced, we validated, that's the way personal evolution work. By actually helping people achieve that, and when we did that, we noticed that they actually achieve it in a fraction of the time than it would otherwise take them to just work on isolated results. Do you feel when you look back at... uh the history of whatever has been achieved in personal development or self-help space until now, are they just like, how do they, okay, they come up with some hypothesis, but they don't just put it out without testing it, right? So is it that there's no validation at all? Like, what's the merit to some of it or what's the demerit? I think there's a difference between testing it with one person, which is yourself, and testing it with thousands of people. And I think there's also a difference in testing one aspect versus testing every aspect and there's a difference in testing for one month versus testing for two three years together most personal development approaches have lagged is testing the efficacy without blaming it on you know the the client because a lot of times these methods fall back on oh the person was resistant or they are not yet deep enough for this or you know they're not trying their their best but I think people always try the best when it comes to them. They, they want to put their best intentions forward. So the real test is when there is no excuse made by the scientist, by the pioneer, by the artist. And I think that is number one rule. In our ecosystem, we tell people, if you have a guess, and let's be clear, I don't care how intuitive you think you are, it doesn't matter how many lives you changed. If you think something about a particular person, it's at best a guess. And how do you know if your guess is right? Because if you can produce the change in minutes for them, that is innate, that becomes a core capability and they're a new person from that moment onwards, then your guess is right. If you can't make that change happen for them, your guess is wrong. Go find another guess. So since we have that strong foundation, the humility for specialists and for us to accept that everything we know about a person is at best a guess. Doesn't matter how close they are to you, doesn't matter how good you think you are in what you do, Everything you think you know about a person is a guess. And so now all kinds of excuses of, you know, that person was tough, that person is resistant is all out of the window. So if it doesn't work, means your guess was wrong. And now with all the excuses out of the window, now you track them for years together, even though you're making results happen instantly and not after months, which means in years together, you're doing several layers and rounds of evolution like whatever a person dreams is their next level whatever is their like highest standards of uh, you make that happen in six months but you still track them for two years because you're getting to the next and to the next and you do it with thousands and thousands of people and then you help people who can do this with thousands of thousands of people so at that scale it becomes science I don't think anything has happened so far where there's one-on-one tracking across all these data points for thousands of people for years together. So for a person, we're predicting, we're making a best guess of what could be the set of changes this person needs. So we're predicting capability yeah. development. So we're predicting a gap in capability. We're so predicting we're the evolution mapping. that might happen for them with certain capabilities that are accelerated in the and, and the outcomes that it might create for them in their life. And when we predict... Um, the capabilities and we predict the possible consequences, the evolution thereby, and then we're doing it. And we're not just doing it and feeling happy about the results that they feel immediately, which is which is great. What so if, I, if our business is helping people, hey, come pay me this amount of money, I'll help you get these results. Then that's good enough. But if your intention is evolution scientists, which we didn't know back then, but we intuitively did it. But if your intention is evolution science then just giving them something and them getting good results is not good enough you have to track long-term data the evolution is about okay you're a five-year-old you have muscles of a five-year-old 
but at some point you want to have muscles of a 15 year old will that not happen when they're 15 anyway yes and when it comes to muscles it's okay when it happens at the time it's designed to do but it when it comes to emotional capabilities when it comes to artistic capabilities when it comes to inner genius the faster and quicker things are time compressed the better it is and i know wouldn't that rob people of their childhood or the childhood experiences if they grow up too fast or if they become too adult like or you know go way ahead of time and try to uh, do things which is which is not in the natural timeline or what they think i don't think anyone is in the natural timeline anyway because what <laughs> most people are growing into is a cybernetic system where they're already half droids they connected to the internet the information that goes in the preferences are programmed by what search engines throw at you their parents are programmed to begin with but what i think will happen if children can evolve faster is they can cut through all the nonsense that comes in the intrud media to movies and so many different things and actually reach to their true potential because i think children don't need covering now what they need is education that covers them from whatever wrong information the society is throwing at them i want to be i want i want to be very clear that you know in the society you're always going to find two types of people you're always going to find two types of beliefs you're always going to find things that are going to corrupt and things that are going to build and i think our primary focus has to not be to have a doll in the house but to raise a child who's so sharp and intelligent that they can self protect from the demonic or values now i'm not saying which one is what i'm just saying if there's good and evil and you have an opinion of what is good and evil you want to protect your children from what you think might be evil so evolving children helping them develop the ability to you know some of these capabilities that actually help the ch- child enjoy life more than rob innocence uh, like one of the capabilities i like is you know the inner ability to certainly be another person and feel the world through their eyes now as humans we have the capability built into our neurology isn't that what uh, uh, all of the virtual reality is attempting to do as well no virtual reality is building external stimuli to activate something that you already have internally built in as a mechanism and so triple perceptual position for a child to feel the world like he or she does but also to feel the world from another person's point of view not from their shoe not from their position not from their but from their neurology is is a very deep capability it kind of builds an empathy and it allows in fact children do this you know they look at their grandparents and they can feel that desire that longingness they can see the world through their eyes a lot you know what i love most about these capabilities is yeah. that once you develop them they become so innate it's like hard to imagine what life is like without that capability in fact you know what i would say children already are born with it and adults rob it from them <laughs> so if we are actually helping children evolve they yeah. probably save god those capabilities yeah i think worldwide people do accept the narrative that adults become slower learners and that children are better learners yeah. so what must be going on right to 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 take away the natural brilliance of learning and the natural circuitry of learning that we engage in as humans and have that corrupted so something is anyway going wrong so and you're saying that uh, when we uh, preempt and build the right set of superior capabilities at the right age there are some aspects which are physical to it for example the brain till a particular age is more fluid but that doesn't mean all plasticity is gone it doesn't mean new neural par- pathways are not being formed rapidly so i think the world is attributed too many things to age than is actually true mm. so yes there is some physical elements to a child learning fast but then there are so many other things that you can still continue to do as an adult which most people cannot do and as you say that's like an evidence that there's some things that are lost that when you're born you're born much more with potential and why not learn how to evolve that we are not robbing from children by helping them evolve but actually keep helping them keep their natural gifts safe and also protecting them from people who may not have the best of the intentions for them what i love about evolution artistry is whether i'm um, especially in some of our programs i mean we have people as young as like 10 years old who come to our programs 
and to be evolution path, artists exactly to be on the path to developing evolution artistry and it's fascinating how i've seen some of these young kids go and influence their peers for the better when they see that child that is struggling before an examination they're able to quickly go and be that light at that point in time not motivating them not telling them oh don't worry or you can do it but they artfully able to literally change the way that person feels uh, to the point that they don't have that fear or that limitation not just at that moment but in you know for like a long time and that's how i've seen most people commit almost their lifetime into becoming evolution artists haven't you seen that happen too people by nature are curious like you know even when you take a monkey and you know it it gets hold of a tool you see how it goes and tries to open coconut or different things it tries to put the tool to use and if you got a magic wand and you had like you know a book which says if you do this things will fly if you do this uh you know a uh, stone will turn into gold own people kind of explore the limits of what is possible won't you be curious and uh, and i think when people get the ability to evolve really fast they have these tools and they see it in them and they see the impact it creates on the world and they see their ecosystem evolving it certainly puts you on a part of uh, you know the same thing that drives every creator every engineer every designer is certainly you're looking at what is possible because i think human minds have this innate thing and it doesn't matter what field you see this in every field people want to know what's possible especially when you discover something novel unique you want to know what's possible with this like some mind could think about steam just lifting the lid of a vessel which was holding and heating water some mind can think of what's possible with this can this lift can this move an engine and some mind could take that forward and think can this go f- so fast and can it be in a particular shape that can take off in the air so human mind is inherently creative but what happens is pe- people don't get the tools that triggers it they don't get the personal experience that triggers it and and a lot of times personal development is so boring and so painstaking that you don't have time to think you know what can you do with it and a lot of times efforts for personal development work counterintuitive mm. but the moment you kind of like shake that off and you show people how easy fast it can be how it can be how it can be almost instant and spontaneous it it unlocks that curiosity because now they want to know what else is possible and when they when they think is this possible and they go explore and they they see it happening with a family member and the interesting thing is the unprecedented or the unexpected things that happen they go with a particular outcome in mind and that happens and something more happens now they are even more curious oh is can create a ripple effect so now they want to know what more can happen harini mean, that was wonderful and hearing from you why you want to do this podcast and uh, about the fact that this is a science and um how it's important for everyone to be evolution artist it was not there before but it is there now you have the tools so no one should have an excuse ever on why they haven't become an evolution artist because everyone whether they realize it or not has a deep desire to evolve to make another human being a better more equipped and capable and and sometimes it's them sometimes their own family sometimes it's an entire society and now you want to take the tools and techniques and science that you've learned from the very unique business and the unique me- mechanisms and methods that we've employed that allows us to track thousands of people across years evolving in months instead of decades and you want to share all of this in this podcast along with me and um so and help billions of people get access to the science and maybe there'll be enough evolution artists in the world to make the world a better place wow and when you see that there are that many evolution artists in the world uh what do you think the world will look like oh i'm going to talk all about that in the next episode <laughs> the energy podcast